So welcome everybody to this latest revision video on 162 Maths and in this video we'll be going over the AQA GCSE Maths 2022 Foundation Paper 1 Non-Calculator Practice Paper. Now there is a link to the paper as long with the revision list and a hyperlink revision list to all the topics that are included on this paper given by the advance notice in the description for you to download either while watching this video or beforehand. Now, before we get started working through this practice paper, it is really important that you familiarize yourself with the advance notice information given about the foundation paper one for June 2022. Now, from this list, you can see that it's broken down in by number, algebra, ratio, geometry and measure and statistics. Now, there are about 40 topics uh, listed in total on this paper. And I would say that there's I've never seen a GCSE paper with more than 30 questions, which really means that a lot of these topics are going to be combined into one question. So it is all going to well revising each of these particular topics individually, but try and get an understanding and try and practice questions where questions are involving other subtopics on this list. Now, from before we go through the practice paper, uh, it is important to note that as some of these topics uh, are missing from this particular video, and that is inequality notation, systematic listing, and then if we go down the other list, that um, density is missing, and I would say from the others, I would say construction and region is missing and outliers are missing and i would say that's pretty much it other than that a lot of these other topics are included in this practice paper so just bear in mind that just by practicing this paper alone is not going to be sufficient revision so please do make sure that you understand and fully understand these topics that are listed in each of these areas and if you're never unsure then you can click in the link in which i've created a revision list of these which links you to all the individual videos that cover each of these particular topics so let's get started on this practice paper. Now, just a reminder, you can access the questions that are on this foundation practice paper one by clicking on the link in the description below. So now I recommend you have an attempt at this paper before continuing watching this video as we go through the answers. So let's get started. So question one relates to fractions and it says work out half times seven, giving your answer as a mixed number. So here, if we have a half and we've got a whole number, well, if I convert that into a fraction, the whole number that is and then with multiplying i multiply across so i've got one times seven which is seven two times one which is two and then i want to convert this as a mixed number and seven over two is three and a half so i'm going to write three and a half there Moving on to question two, it says, which number is six less than minus two? So here I'm going to do minus two minus six, which gives me the answer of minus eight. Then moving on to question three, it says, work out 1.2, take away 0 0.25. So if I do 1.2 and then writing 0 0.25, I'm going to subtract the two numbers. So again, makes it easy if I've got the same number of numbers after the decimal point. So here I'm going to have to do some borrowing. And so I've got 10 take away 5, which is 5. 11 take away 2, which is 9. And I've got 0. So the answer is 0 0.95, which is answer C. Moving on to question 4, it says that on a circle, which of these is always longer than the diameter? And the correct answer you should have highlighted is B. Then moving on to question five, it says work out six times 78. So if I just do 70, now it doesn't really matter which method you use, whether it's a grid method or the column method, which is what I'm using now. So six times eight is 48 and seven times six is 42 plus four is 46. So I should have four, six, eight. Then 20 times 78, well, 78 times 10 is 780. And if I double that, I end up with, and end up with 0, 16, and 15, so it's 1560. And then finally for C, it says work out 26 times 78. Well, for this, all I need to do is add the previous two numbers together. Alternately, you could work it out separately but again, it's kind of encouraging you to use your previous answer. 
in which what I should have is 2028 as my answers. Now, if a question did say hence work it out, then you would have to add the two answers together. But simply because as it doesn't say hence, you could just simply do 26 times 78 and work it out. And again, you could use the column method, the grid method, whichever method you prefer, as long as the answer is correct, it's all good. Moving on to question six, it says work out 20% of 16,000. Well, 10% is going to be 1,600. So 20% is going to be double that, which is 3200. Then moving on to question seven, it says here are four number cards and we've got 7.2, 0.32 and 0.8 and 5.5. It says choose two cards that uh, to make the answer to this calculation a whole number. Put the bigger number card first and include the answer in your calculation. So the correct answer we should have is 7.2 plus 0.8 which gives us an answer of 8 and then it says for b choose two cards to make the answer to this calculation as large as possible now because we're subtracting to make this answer as large as possible we want the biggest number here the smallest number here and looking at the four cards our biggest number is 7.2 our smallest card is 0.32 and so then our final answer is going to be 6.88. Then moving on to question eight, it says that in AI, 830 divided by 50 gives the same answer as X divided by 100. Work out the value of X. Now this is just an equivalence fraction question. So this is what we've got, and that is the same as dividing by 10. So what we've we done to get from 50 to 100, well, we've doubled it or times it by two. So I need to double 830 and 830 times 2 is going to give me 1660. It then says what is the value of 830 divided by 50? So again all we need to do is do the division. So here I've got 6660. Well this calculation here is the same as this calculation here. So if I do 1660 divided by 100 what I'm doing is I'm moving the decimal point two places so one two so the answer then is going to be 16.6 .6. it then says that a coach can take 50 people how many coaches are needed to transport 830 people so for this what i need to do is do 830 divided by 50 which is 16.6 .6. obviously you can't get 16.6 .6 buses so we need to round up so the answer then is going to be 17 buses or coaches and if I lose, I wouldn't definitely wouldn't lose the mark if I wrote it as buses, but let's just write it for how and what it is. Then it then says Jane needs to hire 13 coaches. Each coach costs £450 to hire. Work out the total cost of hiring 13 coaches. So what I need to do is to do 450 multiplied by 13. So here and again, it doesn't matter which way you use, whether grid method, column method, as long as you get the answer right, it's all good. So here we've got 3 times 0, which is 0, 3 times 5, which is 15, and then 3 times 4, which is 12, plus 1 is 13. Then add a 0, and then I've got 4, uh, 0, 5, 4, and add them all up, and I end up with 5, 8, 50. Moving on to question nine, it says that for part A, add one congruent triangle to the grid below to make a parallelogram, which is all which isn't also a rectangle. So for this, what we need to do is now congruent just means using the exact same size triangle. So here to turn this into a parallelogram, what I need to do is join those two points there, and this is what I should have, and that then turns it into a parallelogram. For B, it says, what is the name of the shape made by the three congruent triangles on the grid below? And this is a trapezium. And then for C, it says, what is the name of the shape made by the four congruent triangles on the grid below? And that is a rhombus. 
Then looking at question 10, it says that a fair dice has six sides numbered one to six. After it is rolled, five of the numbers can be seen. Write down the probability that one of these five numbers is three. Well, here we've got an opportunity of one out of six being a three. And we can see five faces. So then here we multiply that by five, giving us a final answer of five over six. The next question then says work out the least possible sum of the five numbers. So let me just explain this one. So this is the probability of getting a three and this is the number of faces. Seen and so that then gives us five six then moving on to b it says work out the least possible sum of the five numbers well the biggest if we want the smallest total of the five numbers we need to get rid of the biggest number which is six so the numbers on show are going to be one two three four and five and so all i need to do is add these numbers up so this gives me nine this gives me five and this gives me one so if i add those numbers up i get an answer of 15. Then moving on to question 11, it says work out 10% of 700, and that is 70. It then says work out 65% seven, of seven, 700. So here 50% is going to be 350. 10% is going to be 30, uh, sorry, is going to be 70. And 5% therefore is going to be half of 10%, which is 35. So all I then need to do is add those numbers up in which I end up with 5, 15 and a 4 so give me a total answer of 455. Five. Then moving on to question 12 it says that in a game two fair spinners are spun if the arrow lands on a different number the score is the higher number if the arrow lands on the same numbers the score is zero complete the table to show the possible scores so here we're going for the same. So again, looking at this, we've got two against one, so two wins, three against one, three wins, five against one, five wins. Two, two is a zero. Then we've got three, two, so the three wins, five, two, so the five wins, two, four, so the four wins, uh, four, two, four wins, four, three, four wins, five, four, the five wins, seven, two, so it's just going to be seven. So here the next question then says what is the probability that the score will uh, that the score will be an odd number so if i highlight all the odd numbers so here i've got uh, 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 and have we got any others oh, yeah 9 so here it's going to be 9 out of 16 then says the game is played using spinners C and D and the table shows the possible scores and the question is asking us to write down the missing numbers on spinner D. So here looking at the table here if we've got three the winner then this must be a three. If that's a zero then this must be a four. This must be a seven and this must be a nine. So our three numbers are going to be three, four, seven, nine and you can write those numbers in the spinner in any order you wish. But looking at question 13, it says that A, B, E, F and A, C, D, F are rectangles. A to F is 12 centimetres, A to B is 3 centimetres and B to C is 4 centimetres. Work out the ratio of the primitive A, B, E, F to the primitive A, C, D, F. Give your answer in its simplest form. So here the perimeter of A, B, E, F, which is this rectangle here. Is going to be equal to 12 plus 3 plus 12 plus 3 which gives us 30 centimeters then if I then work out the perimeter of ACDF which is a large rectangle so the perimeter of ACDF and that's going to be 12 plus 7 plus 12 plus 7 which is 38 centimeters so then from this, what I then need to do is to write that as a ratio. So I've got 30 to 38, and then I want to simplify this. So it's going to be divided by two, so it's 15, and it's going to be 19. And there is my final answer. 
Moving on to question 14, it says that the nth term of a sequence is 7n minus 3. Work out the third term. So for the third term, n equals 3. So I'm going to substitute n equals 3 into this formula. So I've got 7 times 3, take away 3, which is 21, take away 3, which gives me an answer of 18. So moving on to question 15, it says which point lies on the line of x minus 5 equals 0? Well, if I rearrange this, I get x equals 5. So I'm looking for, and there is no y, so y equals 0. So I'm looking for the coordinate of 5, 0, which is option A. So moving on to question 16, it says that A is a negative number. Choose two words from the list in the box that describe a squared. Well, if I just pick a few negative odd numbers, so I've got minus two, not minus two, minus three rather, minus five, and let's go for minus 11. And if I square each of these numbers, and let's have a look at what we get. So minus three squared is gonna give me positive nine. Minus 5 squared is going to give me positive 25, and minus 11 squared is going to give me positive 121. So looking at this, I can see that all the answers are positive, and I can see all the answers are odd. So the correct answer we should have are B and C. Then moving on to question 17, it says the ratio of 1 millimetre represents 1 centimetre is in the same ratio as 1 to 10. Complete the following, 1 centimetre represents 1 kilometre in the same ratio. So what we need to do is we need to work out how many centimetres there are in 1 kilometre. So let me just write that down. So how many centimetres are in 1 kilometre? So looking at this, we've got 1 metre equals 100 centimetres. We've got then one kilometer is therefore then going to be a thousand meters. So let me just write down thousand meters. So I'm multiplying that by a thousand. So then I need to multiply this by a thousand, which then gives me one zero zero one two three. So then the answer then is going to be 100,000 or five zeros. Moving on to question 18, it says that Tim and Jane were discussing the following mock exam question. Here are some data about two groups of people listening to a radio station one day. And in this, we've got group alpha, group beta, the percentage, the mean number of hours listening and the range of numbers, a uh, range of hours listening. So compare the data for uh, the people in the alpha group with the people in the beta group make three comparisons. So Tim said that he struggled with the question. Jane said that she had gained full marks by stating each comparison with beta had a higher. Try and work out what the three comparisons she used, write them in separate lines. So here, let's have a look at what, what uh, Jane said. So here we can say that beta had a higher percentage. We can also say that beta had a higher mean. And we can also say that beta had a higher range. I don't know what Tim was on about because that question is not too bad. And there we go. Moving on to question 19. Now, question 19, there is a bit of an error in the writing of this question, uh, simply because when it's talking about rotational symmetry, every shape has rotational symmetry. Every shape's got an order of one. Now, in this particular question, just so that all the numbers don't lie in the middle group, I'm going to just edit this question so it talks about having, has a rotational symmetry of more than one. So just to give it a bit of variety. So here it says, here are five shapes, one to five, and we've got regular pentagon, trapezium, parallelogram, rhombus, and a scalene triangle. And in the Venn diagram, we've got two groups. We've got a set of quadrilaterals, and R is a, a shape with more than one order of rotation. So here, let's have a look at the shape. So regular pentagon has got five slates, but it has got rotational symmetry. So that is has got an R. A trapezium is a quadrilateral so that is a quad parallelogram is a quad 
rhombus is a quad and a scalene triangle isn't. So then looking at the rotational symmetry, well a trapezium can have uh, can't have rotational symmetry because it looks like this or it looks like a roof. So here that's not going to work. A parallelogram does have rotational symmetry and a rhombus has rotational symmetry as well. So here what we've got to do is just write these numbers in then. So here which ones have only got a 1R? Well that's going to be 1 and let me just use a different colour for this. So here completing our Venn diagram in the ones in the middle we've got 3 and we've got 4. Ones that are just R is 1. Ones that are just Q is 2 and the one that's outside is going to be 5. Then moving on to question 20, it says work out root 144 minus 16 minus 5 times 2 squared. So this is a bid mass question. So looking at the roots, the root of 144 is 12. Then working with the uh, bracket, we've got 5 times 2. So here we've got minus 16 minus 10 squared. Then deal with the bracket. So I've got 12 minus 6 squared. So then I've got 12 minus 36, which gives us an answer of minus 24. Then moving on to question 21, it says Tim plays a computer game. Each game is a win or a loss. He wins three fifths of his first 40 games and then wins the next 12 games. For all 52 games, work out the ratio of his wins to losses. Give your answer in its simplest form. So working with this, what we need to do first is work out what three fifths of 40 is going to be. So here I'm going to do 40 divided by 5 which is 8 times 3 which is 24. So here is 1 24 of his 40 games. He then wins another 12. So 12 out of the remaining uh, what's going to be another 12 games. So 12 wins out of 12 games. And that then adds up to 52. So here he's won 36 games. So then he's lost and it's going to be 52 minus 36, which gives us an answer of 16 losses. So then what we then need to do is then do win to loss is going to be 36 to 16. So then I'm trying to find a common a factor of those two numbers which then becomes 4 so it's going to be 9 to 4. Moving on to question 22 and it says divide 405 in the ratio of 3 to 2 give your answer in the form of so and so. So here what we need to do first is add the two numbers together which gives us 15 we then do 405 divided by 15 which gives us an answer of 27 so then from this I then need to multiply both these two numbers by 27. So 3 times 27 gives me 81 and 12 times 27 is going to give me 324. So the answer then is going to be 81 and 324. Moving on to question 23, it says Tony works at an airport in the UK. He wants to predict how many planes will land at the airport in a year. In his method, he uses the estimate of 150 planes uh, in each six hour period throughout the day, assumes the same number of planes land each day. Assume that it's not a leap year, work out his prediction. So for this, what we need to do is first of all, see how many six hour periods there's going to be. So it's going to be 24 divided by 6 which equals 4. So there's 4 6 hour periods. So then from this what we then need to do is do 4 multiplied by the number of planes which is 150. So that's going to be 150, 300, 450, 600. So it's going to be 600 planes per day. And then what we then need to do is multiply that by the number of days. So it's going to be 365 times 600. And if we do that either using the column method or the grid method or any other way of multiplying you do, you should have an answer of 219,000 planes land per year per Tony's prediction. Then for question 24, it says write 64 as a power of 4. 
and that's going to be 4 to the power of 3. Then for b it says write 3 squared to the power of 6 as a single power of 3. So here we need to, when we've got brackets we multiply the powers so that's going to be 3 to the power of 12. Then with part c it then says write 125 times 5 to the power of 4 to the power of 7 as a single power of 5. Looking at this number here we can write that as 5 to the power of 3. And then just like we did in the previous question, when we've got brackets, we multiply the powers. So that's going to be 5 to the power of 4 times 7, which is 28. And then when we're multiplying, we add the powers. So it's going to be 5 to the power of 3 plus 28, which is 31. Then moving on to question 25, it says that the range of a set of numbers is 13.25. The smallest number is minus 3.875. Work out the largest number. So here what we need to do is simply add the two numbers together. So here we've got 13.25 and then we've got minus 3.875 because obviously a plus and a minus become a minus. Then if I then work this out, so let's just stick a zero there and do a bit of manipulating so here what we've got is we'll change that to a 0 that to a 13 that becomes a 12 that becomes a 12 that becomes 11 that becomes 15 and 14 and that becomes a 10 so here we've got 5 7 uh, 3 and 9 and our decimal point goes there so our largest number is going to be 9.375 so looking at question 26 it says that Saul makes green paint and citron paint and he mixes green paint with white paint as shown so the apple green is in the ratio of 2 to 1 of green to white and citron green is in the ratio of 4 to 5 of green to white. He makes 90 litres of green paint to this green paint he adds 24 litres of green paint. How much more white paint does he need to add to the citron green paint and your final line must say he needs to add X amount of litres of white paint. So let's have a look at this particular question. So here let's have a look at how much green paint and white paint he actually needs. So from this he's got 90 litres. So here we've got from terms of the apple green. So if we do 90 divided by 3 and the 3 is from 2 plus 1 that gives us 30. So in the ratio of green to white we've got, oh, let's put the numbers in first, so we've got the ratio of 2 to 1, so if I multiply that by 30 and multiply this by 30, then what we know is we've got 60 litres of green paint and we've got 30 litres of white paint. Now from this, what we then do is we add 24 litres of green paint, giving us a total of 84 litres of green paint. So looking at this ratio here of citron green, so if I then do 84 divided by 4, I get an answer of 21. So then if I then do 5, because I want to work out how many parts of white paint I then need, so it's going to be 5 times 21, which is 105 litres of white paint needed. Now I already know that I have 30, so in terms of how much she needs to add, it's going to be 105 minus 30, which gives us an answer of 75 litres. So therefore he needs to add 75 litres of white paint. So then moving on to question 27 which looks at standard form. It says work out 2 times 10 to the power 3, uh, 10 to the power 15 rather, divided by 8 times 10 to the power of 8. So here if we do 2 divided by 8 we get 0 0.25 which is the same as a quarter. 
which equals 0.25. And with powers, what we do when we're dividing, we take away the powers. So 15 take away from 8 gives me 10 to the power of 7. Now for this, I need to write, I need to make this number bigger, so it becomes 2.5. So I need to make the power of 10 smaller. So it's going to be 2.5 times 10 to the power of 6. Then says work out the powers of C and D with this. Well, this part here, well, if I've got 7 23,000.008 then this bit here is going to be 7.3 times 10 to the power of 1, 2, 3, 4 and this part here is going to be 8 times 10 to the power of minus and it's going to be 1, 2, 3 so here then my values of C is going to be 4 and the values of D is going to be minus 3 so moving on to question 28, it says the square root of 5 squared plus 12 squared equals the cube root of 64a cubed. And the question is asking us to work out the value of a. So looking at this left hand side, so let me just highlight that first. Then what we end up with is we end up with the square root of 5 squared, which is 25, plus 12 squared, which is 144. And if I then work that out, that then becomes 169 and the square root of 169 is 13. Then if I work with the right hand side and what I should note is that when you've got the cube root of two things being multiplied then I can split the two things up. So I've got the cube root of 64 times the cube root of a cubed. Now the cube root of 64, well, 64 is a cube number so if I cube it I get 4 and if I cube root a cubed I'm just going to be left with a so 13 equals 4a so then if I then do 13 divided by 4 equals a and then 4 and then work that out as a decimal so that carries over I then get 3 and then with a remainder of 1 I get 2 with a remainder of 2 and that then becomes 5 so a equals 3.25 I think if I left it as a fraction that also would be fine for the full marks. Then moving on to our last question it says that a large rectangle is made by joining three identical small rectangles as shown. The perimeter of one small rectangle is 21, the width of one small rectangle is x, work out the perimeter of the large rectangle and it says what a final line should read like. So here if this is x and this is x and what I mean by this I mean this length here and this length here is going to be x then this length here is going to be 2x. That means that the width of one rectangle is going to be x, so that's going to be x, and that's going to be x. This length here is going to be 2x, that's going to be 2x, and this is going to be x. Now in terms of the perimeter of a small rectangle, well that's going to be 2x plus x plus 2x plus x, and that all adds up to 21. So here what I've got is I'm gonna end up with 6x equals 21. So x equals 21 over six. And if I divide both those numbers by three, I end up with seven over two, which is 3.5. Then if I, now I know the value of x, I can then work out what the perimeter of the large rectangle is gonna be. So the perimeter, of the large rectangle and that's going to be 3x plus 2x plus 3x plus 2x and again where I'm getting those numbers from well that there is 3x 2x 3x and 2x and then if I join those x's together I end up with 10x well if x equals 3.5 then I'm going to do 10 times 3.5 which gives me a final answer of 35 centimeters and there we are done